and welcome to a new vlog. Welcome if you're new here. Hi, I'm Andrea. Welcome back if you're one of my lovely returning friends. It's great to have you all here. It is a very gray, dreary, beautiful Monday morning outside. The rain that came in yesterday, Easter Sunday, is continuing. So it's the Monday after Easter. I'm still here at my parents' house. I'm heading home in probably about 30 minutes. It's Monday after a holiday weekend. I'm tired. I can't think straight, <laughs> but it's all good. It is April 1st. That's something else. It's April 1st, which means it is officially April and the start of Camp NaNoWriMo for those of you who might be doing Camp Nano this month. So if you're doing Camp Nano, good luck. Of course, you're going to be watching this video on like April 8th or something April 7th so I um, hope your first week of NaNo has been going well if you watched the um, vlog last Wednesday that would have gone up on April 3rd it is the for me as I'm filming this it is the first day of the cozy magical relaxed creativity project we're doing here I still need like a a better name for it one that hasn't already been trademarked. All my ideas have already been like taken by other people. But yeah, it's the first day of my relaxed writing challenge for April. Um, or for me, it's gonna be an editing challenge. So it's the creativity challenge that we're doing on this channel this month. So I hope some of you, after seeing that last video, have decided to join me this month. Um, so you can leave your updates on your project in the comments below. Um, so I do need to start doing some editing um, today. I need to do at least 15 minutes because that's my goal for the month, at least 15 minutes a day, not counting Tuesdays and Thursdays when I go teach. I'm gonna try to do that, do some of that today. But before that, the thing I'm kind of excited about because it's so long overdue, I am going to have my eye exam or get my eye exam done later this afternoon. So it's one reason why I can't take too long to get home um, from the house. So I'm gonna go home, do some teaching work, and then go out to my eye exam, and then come home and do more teaching work, and then some editing. I have not had an eye exam in like almost five years. I am way overdue. My prescription doesn't change that much. It changes just a little bit every year, but because it's been almost five years, I'm now really noticing it. And so it's been like the past year, I've been like, you really need to do this. You really need to do this. And then this year, it was like one of my goals for the year is you have to get it done, preferably like in the first quarter. It's now April 1st. So quarter one is technically done, but <laughs> close enough. So it was on my list for February. I didn't get it done in February. And then by the end of March, I had at least made the appointment and here on April 1st I'm going to get it done so that will be good so yeah I will keep you updated on that um, I'm getting my eyes checked and I'm doing a contact lens exam they said they normally do that as two separate appointments but that they could do that together so hopefully they don't make me come back for a separate appointment because I, I really just want to get the contact lens exam and get the contact lenses ordered because it's warming up the Sun is coming out a lot more I mean, it's been sunny all winter, but like the sun just gets more intense and I would like to be able to wear my non-prescription sunglasses when I'm like out running errands and stuff. It's just nice to be able to push my sunglasses to the top of my head and not have to actually switch out <laughs> pairs of glasses. So yeah, so I'm gonna finish um, getting some food and getting ready and getting packed up here at the house and then we will head home. Gus is sleeping up in the front with my sister, but I'm hoping he'll come out and see me again. I saw him really briefly when I first woke up and then he disappeared to go snuggle with his mommy again. So hopefully I can see Gus. But yeah, I will show you what I do here at the house. I'll show you Gus if he does come out. Um, but I'm not really doing a whole lot and I'm not wearing any makeup because I don't want to be wearing mascara. If I've got my brows a little bit, but I didn't want mascara on if I'm going to be putting contacts in. So yeah, anyway. I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna go get some food <laughs> and in a little bit we will head home and get back to teaching work.
Okay, it is now quite a bit later in the afternoon. I have just gotten back from my eye exam, so that was exciting. So, first eye exam in about five years. It has been a minute since my last eye appointment. And this is a whole new vision center office that I went to, but they were fantastic. They were super, super nice. In terms of my general eye health, everything's looking great. Everything looks normal, everything looks healthy, there's really nothing wrong or nothing to be concerned about. So that's all great. Which makes me feel very good because <laughs> I it had been so long. And at the last appointment that I went to in 2019, I don't think they dilated my eyes, so I don't think that was even like a full, full checkup. So it's probably been six or seven years since they've like really properly looked at my eyes. So I went into this one knowing I was probably going to have to do some sort of eye dilation hassle, but I was going to do it because it's important to get your eye health checked. We often think about going to the eye doctor purely from the standpoint of our vision and being able to see, but it's like any other medical thing, which is why I do not under understand in this country why vision providers aren't just covered under your general health insurance, why you have to have separate vision insurance. It's absolutely maddening to me because they do check for different things. So I was very relieved that everything was fine as far as the eye health was concerned. As far as my prescription, it has changed. Not terribly by the sound of it, but it has changed. It has definitely changed. He kind of did the thing where he flipped all the dials around and, you know, asked me one or two, three or four and all of that. and kind of we refined the new prescription and then he cycled it back to my original prescription and it was not a massive, massive, massive difference between the new prescription and my current one, but it was noticeable. It, it was noticeable. He said, I don't yet need bifocals. Yay! Um, but he did say that that tends to happen somewhere between ages 41 and 46. So at 43, I'm right in the middle. He said that I kind of had two options. We could, he, as he phrased it, dumb down my new prescription to kind of balance out the, dis the difference between distance vision and close-up vision. Or he could just do my new prescription, which would be slightly better for distance vision, and that my current glasses might end up being a little bit better for doing close-up reading work or like computer work. I have four really cute pairs of glasses that I've bought from Zenny over the last few years. Not sponsored by Zenny. So I don't, it's kind of nice to be able to still use those. So yeah, so I don't mind that and I will be able to get contacts. That was, so I, I knew I'd be able to get contacts, but there was some really positive changes on the contact lens side of things. With the contacts, the good thing is they actually now make, <laughs> maybe they made them five years ago and I just wasn't given the option, but I now have an option for daily disposables, even though I have a really bad astigmatism. So my history with contact lenses, the first contacts I had were, they were like monthly pairs. So I had to have regular solution for part of the time, but then like every week I had to put them in like a special cleaning solution. And that was just a pain and I never wanted to do it. And I'd always forget and stuff. So, so it was really nice when a little while later I went in and renew my prescription and got some new contacts and that doctor put me in some contacts for astigmatism that were two week pairs and so they didn't need to be cleaned in the same way but they would last me two weeks so it was like they were semi disposable just every two weeks I would throw them out and I didn't have much maintenance in between other than like keeping them in their little case and so that was good but the problem with that is 
I will sometimes wear contacts for a few days and then not wear them for two weeks. And if I'd had a pair that was just kind of sitting in there for two weeks, so I was like, Ugh. technically they've been open for two weeks, but they haven't been in my eyeballs for two weeks. So can I still wear it? Can I extend it to three weeks? It was always a judgment call. So daily disposables would be really nice because then they stay in their little package until I need them. And if I take two weeks and don't wear any, I'm not throwing out a whole pair. So they now have the daily disposables for astigmatisms. And he went and looked them up. They have, they have them for my prescription and my specific astigmatism, but they didn't have them in stock in their office. So they've put those on order. I will go back and pick up my diagnostic pair which will come with, he, he said like five lenses. So I'll be able to play around with those. Um, he said if there was something wrong. I think he said I needed to come in for a follow-up and to save one pair for a follow-up. But then the girl at the front said that that would only be if there was something wrong with them. So I'll double check that again. But I'll be able to wear them for like two or three days, save one or two pairs just in case I need to go back in and have them check something. Um, but I'll be able to kind of wear them, see how they feel, that sort of thing. See if they feel that much different from the old ones that I wore that were every two weeks. But he said that if I'm, I told him, I really only wear contact lenses. Like back when I was wearing them regularly, I was still only wearing them three to four times a week. So only about half the time. Because if I was just working from home and not vlogging and you know not running errands where I'd want to have my non-prescription sunglasses, then there really wasn't a need to put on contacts. Whereas if I was going out to work or doing nice eye makeup or, running errands where I'm going to constantly be taking sunglasses and regular glasses off and just want had to have sunglasses that I can just push to the top of my head then that would be a contact lens day so he said at that point the daily disposables would end up being cheaper because I could just get like a 90 day supply and if I'm only wearing them every you know if I'm only wearing them three or four times a week then the 90 day supply would probably last me closer to like five or six months. So I'm really glad I have that option now. Like that's going to be really nice. So the girl who was helping me today and like checking me in and then checking me out, she said that it would probably take about seven days, three to five business days. So I'm hoping by like Friday and if not by Friday then like Monday or Tuesday of next week so yeah I'm gonna have contacts again soon <laughs> I'm really excited about that I'm gonna have to get all my old sunglasses out and like give them all a good clean and a good dust off because they've just been literally collecting dust for the last five years um, well not quite that long but probably it's probably been about two years since I last wore my contacts the ones I got in 2019 the lenses themselves didn't expire. Um, like I still have some, they didn't expire until this year. Um, I think some of them might have expired last year, but yeah, like they were still, the lenses themselves were still good. The prescription was what was not as good. So yeah, I'm kind of pissed that they convinced me I wasn't paying attention. They didn't like, like that office, it was a different vision center. They didn't like strong arm me into a year supply, but I just thought, yeah, a year supply, not thinking a year supply is wearing them every day all year. And I probably only needed like a three month or a six month supply by their math because I wouldn't wear them every day. So anyway, so yeah, I'm back from the eye doctor. It is still beautiful. I'm I want to go hiking so bad, but I just do not feel well. So I've got all the windows open. I'm enjoying the sound of the wind in the trees, the breeze, and it's not that windy, so the breeze in the tree. I'm gonna do a little bit more work. I did a lot of grading when I first got home. Wasn't even able to vlog it. I just sat down, got to grading, got a lot of work done, but I want to do a little bit more. I need to do some more work in my planner. I think that was one of the last vlog clips, B-roll clips I got was opening up my planner 
then I got distracted and didn't get to do that much actual planning. So I need to do some planning in my planner for the week. And then we can probably get to doing some writing. So I'm enjoying seeing the beautiful clouds. It would be very tempting to go hiking. I just, it was not, it was a fun weekend, but it wasn't a very restful weekend. And I do not want to overdo it today because I cannot take a sick day tomorrow. It would be very, very tempting to take a sick day tomorrow because I genuinely do not feel well and I don't think I'm gonna feel that much better tomorrow. But I, I, there's, it would logistically be too much of a nightmare in terms of what my students have to do and what I'm supposed to do in class tomorrow. Canceling class tomorrow would be a very, very, very bad idea. So I need to take it easy today so that I can go teach tomorrow. <laughs> Thankfully, it's gonna warm up over the next few days, but then it's gonna cool back down again. This has got to be the last time it's gonna cool back down into the 60s because it's April now. Unless the 10 day forecast right now is a complete April Fool's joke and tomorrow it's gonna go up to 90 because right now the 10 day forecast for the first 10 days of April, look, it looks, spectacular yeah i'll be able to go for a hike on wednesday it'll be a little bit warmer but i'm gonna try to go for a hike on wednesday i think maybe wednesday morning that would be a really i need to put that in my calendar that would be a good idea so yeah i'm not gonna go hiking today but we're gonna still enjoy the beautiful weather through the open windows i'm gonna get some more grading done and some planning done and then we'll do some writing and get into day one day one, official day one of our cozy, quiet, calm, relaxed, magical, gentle April writing challenge. Still need a name for that. It is 5.02. I am done with teaching work for today. Quick stationary haul, because I went to Target the other day, kind of unexpectedly. I just had some time and thought, I'm gonna go to Target. I went into the pen and notebook aisles. I needed pens. I did not need notebooks, but I couldn't help myself. I got this two pack of zebra pens they're like nice white like just everything about the pen is white but they're a nice black ink and they're a gel 0.7 millimeter black ink so they write nice a nice fine black line with my beautiful beautiful pink floral planner I haven't really been liking having like just a black pen like it's not a good look the planner is pink with bits of white and gold spiral so like black just isn't matching the aesthetic and I have some beautiful like rose gold and gold pens um, but they're all ballpoint which I do like a good ballpoint pen, but sometimes you just like gel. Like sometimes the gel just writes easier. So I was wanting some gel pens that would look nice with my planner, preferably that had like a clippy thing that I could slide and like have it clip within the spiral. So I saw these zebra ones. So they're just little clicky pens, but they are completely white and are the aesthetic I want. The other um, pens I got were 
one of the like it's like an eco brand i feel like i tore the packaging apart but they're just the U eco brand or something like that but they're pastel sparkle gel ink pens and again full black gel ink medium 0 0.7 millimeter I just liked the pastel color so there's a blue a green a white and a pink so the blue and green are really nice um, but the white and the pink definitely go with the planner so I've had the white zebra pen and the pink of these ones um, kind of clipped into my planner I've been using those tested both of them out on the planner pages as I've been using them on the first few days of April. I haven't been noticing an issue. Very, very, very faint bleed through, but not so bad that it's like driving me nuts. And then the notebook I got, it was just too pretty. And I couldn't, I, I, and it was the only one left. And I couldn't help myself. So this really beautiful green, like faux leather with this beautiful gold embossed or gold print design that says find what brings you joy. And I love the kind of pretty botanical flowers. It's a flexible journal, which I like. It's not um, a hardcover and it's a really good size. It's not super big, but it's not super small. So it's a perfect size to like fit in your handbag. Beautiful floral illustration on the inside. Um, covers of both the front and the back and then each page has um, is lined and then has the month and the day that you can like circle which month and which day you're in as you are writing on that page and it has a little ribbon bookmark which I love I just thought it was really pretty I don't know what I will use it for I do not need another notebook but it was a really really beautiful style i can see myself actually using this one so and not like just setting it on a shelf to admire i will use all the journals one day but this one i think i will actually use sometime this year possibly so yeah so that's my little mini stationery haul but now i need to get my personal laptop because i've been working on my work laptop so I need to get this opened up. I need to get my project notebook out, which also has my April creativity challenge tracker page. Get this tracker page open again. We're gonna do at least 15 minutes. I don't really feel like doing anything today. I will not lie. I, I really don't. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do as far as editing work. I think I'm just going to try for 15 minutes. I just, I feel like I'm very tired and I have no motivation and there's, all I'm really down to are things that just feel like much bigger notes, like much bigger edits. And so that's just a little bit daunting so I don't know like part of me just wants to start working on the next project like there, I'm definitely at that point in editing where I'm tired of working on the project and I'm just kind of ready to start working on the next project and like I could work on project darkness today but I, like this across the pond four needs to be the priority this needs to be what I work on not not another project I kind of talked about this a little bit in the last writing vlog that I'm kind of at a point where I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed by the few notes that are left because it just feels like it's going to require a lot and it's probably not going to need as much like rewriting or inserting new things as I think it will because I've probably already addressed these notes in more subtle ways more than I think I have. So part of it is I am at a point where I probably need to just read it again but I want to do that when my beta readers are reading it and I'm not yet ready. I'm not yet ready to send it to betas. So I'm not going to overthink it. I'm just gonna read through my notes and 
there's a few places where I've mentioned specific scenes where I think I could start putting some of this information. I really do feel like it's just going to be a matter of adding a line of dialogue here, a line of dialogue there, just like little references. So yeah, we'll talk more about this in a minute. Let me start actually doing some editing. Let me try to do my 15 minutes. I might try to do 30, but I'm also really tired of sitting at this table or at this desk. I'm still loving the desk. Do not mistake me. But my back is feeling really sore and I just, I do kind of want to just get back on the couch. Although the clouds have been gorgeous. So it's kind of nice sitting here and being able to see the clouds because I can't really see the clouds from the couch. So I'm going to try for 15 minutes, see if I can do 30. We'll just see how much editing I can actually get done. to cross off a couple things, added a little bit here and there. I've made some notes for a couple more chapters where I can add and like take care of a couple more things, more notes that I have. So I feel like I kind of know what I can do on Wednesday, which will be the next day that I sit down to work on this. So, doing good, made progress, managed 30 minutes, slightly over 30 minutes, but it is now, oh gosh, 6.02. So it's been an hour since I started talking to you all. So it was closer to 45, but anyway. So yeah, I have done everything I'm going to do. I think I can like close out of Scrivener. Where I'm at with the project, I'm just, I'm just trying to not get overwhelmed by being at this particular stage. Like, the stage where I'm done with, like, draft one is done, and I'm nearly done with draft two. I'm ready to just be done done. And, like, I'm ready to just stop start copy editing like mentally I'm ready to start copy editing the book is not ready <laughs> to be copy edited yet so like I'm I'm ready to just be done with it get it published all of that but one of the things I'm hoping will happen this month as I'm working on everything is that some of the anxiety that I have been feeling since Lexi passed away and the thing that was happening at work happened, like both of those things just really kicked off my anxiety. It, it threw me for a loop. It just tipped my whole world upside down. I don't know which way is up. 
I don't know what's safe. I've lost that kind of sense of safety and security in the world and the natural order of things and yeah my whole world has been flipped upside down not just with Lexi but with the other stuff that was going on as well and I'm tired and so I'm tired I'm sad I'm not processing things properly and anytime there's a big thing like this anything that just kind of makes me question why things happen the way they do it flares up my anxiety because Part of my anxiety, I think, is triggered by feeling a lack of control. And so when things happen in my life that demonstrate that lack of control, it just aggravates the anxiety. Like, I, I know I don't have control over my life, but I can feel like I do most of the time. But every now and then something happens that just like really shows me, no, no, you are just along for the ride and you don't get to control anything that's happening. So my anxiety has definitely been flaring and it's just that feeling of, <sighs> I just feel like right now, especially because there were the two things, two really bad things, Lexi and then what happened at work, we all kind of know that bad things come in threes. And so to have two things, literally, like I found out about both or knew about both on the same day, it's just left me with this feeling of what's the third thing going to be? And when is that going to hit? And obviously, sometimes it doesn't come in threes. And there could be something that I'm blanking out that happened first and then Lexi and the news from work were the second and third thing but it's still that feeling of when you have multiple negative things happen in a short span of time it it does make at least for me you can let me know if you feel the same way but for me it, it part of the reason the anxiety gets heightened is it I have that feeling of bad things are happening so what's the next bad thing, bad thing that's going to happen? And so I just feel like I'm really tense and just waiting for the next bad thing to happen. And with the book, like part of me, like, and this is nowhere near the same thing, but it's just anxiety in all aspects of my life flares up. So like there are certain things coming up that I'm now feeling super anxious about. I'm anxious about the book. What if I screw up something with the book? And it's not life or death, so it really doesn't matter. But I take my writing very seriously. Things in the past that like, you know, used to make me anxious, but I've done work to try to feel less anxious. Those have flared up. So I'm just, my brain is not a fun place to be and when it comes to writing and editing i'm second guessing everything i'm doubting everything you know am i making the edits in the right way am i doing a good enough job with these edits am i missing something really important and like at this stage i know i'm still going to do my own kind of beta read through i'm gonna I can still do a draft three that will probably be really short edits, really fast edits, but like this editing pass is not the last time I can go in and make bigger structural and developmental type edits, but then I'm still going to be doing a copy edit and formatting and a final proofread. So like I can still be changing things even in a month, even when I'm copy editing or proofreading. Obviously, when I'm copy editing and proofreading, I'm trying to do fewer changes, but technically I could still be editing things. I don't know. I feel like being an indie author, there's just so much room for anxiety because I don't have other people doing any of these steps for me. And I don't have a publisher who takes on at least some responsibility for checking things. So yeah, the anxiety is just it's not just bad overall it, there is like increasing anxiety just within 
my work as a writer and author. And so that's part of why I know I want a really gentle and relaxed, joyful, joy-focused, you know, approach to writing and editing this month because I'm already so anxious if I try to do a higher pressure writing challenge if I tried to say you have to have developmental editing done by April 15th and copy editing done by April 30th I I, I would break that would break me there's no way I could do something more ambitious and you know pressurized and I feel like in a previous year the goal for something like I would have been wanting to do something like Camp Nano and the goal would have been to like really go hard and go full on with it and try to do a lot and I just know that is the absolute worst thing I could do for myself right now because I already feel I already feel so fragile. I don't have the bandwidth, I don't have the capacity for hardly anything <laughs> this month. But as I said in the kind of intro to this whole writing challenge two vlogs ago, I don't want to just take the whole month off. I don't feel like that's the answer either. I feel like that would just cause a lot of stress for me in the long run. So. It's felt good today. I really, I, I can't say that I was full of joy today while I was writing, but I, I did do a pretty good job of keeping the stressful and anxious thoughts down. It wasn't, you've got to get X number of notes crossed off the editing task list in 15 minutes. It was just, you're working for 15 minutes. See how much you can do. Do something, anything even if it's really, really tiny. And then the timer went off at 15 minutes and I felt like I could do a little bit more, so I hit repeat on the timer, to get another 15 minutes going. And by the time that was done, I could tell I've, I was done. I, I didn't have anything else. It's now 6.15. I'm gonna go sit and relax and just kind of enjoy a cozy, quiet night. So I will show you what I get up to for the next couple of hours. And I'm gonna go try and not think about all the anxious thoughts running through my head right now. But yeah, I feel good about how much work I got done. I, I, I sat down, it's day one of this no stress challenge. Challenge isn't even the right word. I need, I need to think of a different word. It's not a challenge. But project, like monthly writing project, doesn't sound right either. Like, what's, what's the antonym for challenge? That's what I'm trying to think of. That's part of what this needs to be named. It's not a writing challenge. It's kind of, I guess, like a, a writing retreat in a way. But I don't know if that's the right word either. So I'm going to keep thinking about that. Or just not thinking at all. That would probably be even better. I'm just going to go not think for the next couple hours, and I will check with you all in a little while. nearly nine o'clock. I need to wrap up this vlog. It's been a lovely day. The weather is amazing. It's so cool outside. I've still got all the windows open. It is cooled down to like 66 degrees in here. But before I wrap up this vlog, I keep forgetting. I Again, I like for April 1st, like for the video that went up on April 1st, I had wanted it to be something related to the writing cha challenge, although we're not gonna call it a challenge, I'm still figuring out a different word for that. But like, I wanted that to kick off today on YouTube. I've posted something on the community page just to let you all know that's coming on Wednesday, but I wasn't organized enough. But April 1st is also important from a YouTube perspective. I feel like this is something else that, like last year I got distracted by Camp Nano 
and I don't know if I properly ever addressed this on the channel last year. I have it in my notes for some time this month to do a proper video talking about this because I, do, I have so many thoughts. But today, as I'm filming this, April 1st, it is officially eight years that I have been doing YouTube. So eight years ago today, on April 1st, 2016, I published my very first YouTube video. It's still on this channel. Let me know if you've watched it. It's still there in all its awkward glory. <laughs> I look like a deer in headlights. I was scared out of my mind. I just, I had all the visions of the, the big YouTubers that I had been watching and that kind of inspired me to finally start my channel. And I just felt like not them. Like I was not them. Um, that, you know, if I tried to compare myself to them, there was no comparison. I had, like if that was the standard of YouTube, I had no business doing this. But I just, I just had a feeling that I needed to do YouTube. I needed to give it a try. I needed to see what it was like. I don't think 2016 Andrea thought that eight years later I would still be doing this. Day one Andrea, subscriber zero Andrea, she didn't think she'd get even 10 subscribers, let alone 100 or 1,000 or as of filming this, I think we're at 4,296 or 97. I would rather have only the 4,000 plus of you who are watching and who are so lovely and so supportive and let me do the content I want to do and love to do. Like I would rather have you all than have a million subscribers who don't care about me, aren't invested in my content, treat me like I'm just there for their entertainment. Like, I wouldn't want that. And I look at people who have, you know, 50,000, 100,000. I look at people whose channels grow really, really fast, who never really had to kind of go years in between 1,000 subscribers and 2,000 subscribers. Like I've, I've seen people and I've heard people talk about how much it is to process when you go from like 5,000 subscribers to 50,000 in just a few months because of like a viral video or something. And I think when you're still starting out, that rapid ascent sounds like the dream, but in practical reality, it, I think it would be very, very overwhelming. And so I think if I had gone from zero subscribers to 4,000 subscribers in my first few months or even in my first year, I think I would feel the pressure to keep growing. And I think that when I hit the first, when I would have hit that first plateau, I would have taken that really personally. And now like, Somewhere between December and now, um, or somewhere around December, around the end of Vlogmas, my analytics just kind of flatlined. There was no growth, there was even some backsliding. And I think if that had happened earlier, and I've seen new YouTubers in small YouTube groups kind of freak out about this, like, I had someone unsubscribe, you know, should I change my content? Because one person unsubscribed, and I get that instinct. But it's like, people are going to unsubscribe. People are gonna stop subscribing in general. People are going to stop watching. Sometimes they stop watching for a few weeks or a few months and then they come back. Some people just stop watching completely. That is the life of being on YouTube. And anyone who's done YouTube for this long knows that. And it's something you just have to learn to deal with. There have been so many lessons learned in the past eight years. And I think eight years ago, I would have hoped for certain milestones and hoped that I could grow. Although eight years ago, I really didn't think I, I eight years ago, it would have never occurred to me that I would have even a thousand subscribers felt just ridiculous. <laughs> And now, now there's over 4,000 of you and you're lovely and you're amazing and you're so supportive 
And, you know, even though we don't know each other personally, I feel like you genuinely care about me and I genuinely care about all of you. You know, you, some of you have been sharing some really difficult stories in the comments um, in regards to sharing your experience with pet loss. And it has honestly made such a difference in helping me feel so much less alone and how sad I feel and how much I'm struggling with Lexi's death. I just feel like we don't share these stories without caring about each other at least a little bit. Like as much as you can when it's someone you only know on the internet through a screen. But yeah, I just, you will continue to exceed my wildest dreams for this platform. And if I have any wish for the next eight years is that I just continue making the content I love and that that content naturally and organically attracts more amazing people like the 4,000 plus of you who are here now. Like, I don't care if this channel grows fast or slow. I don't care if it completely stops gaining new subscribers or if some people unsubscribe. As long as the people who stick around are the ones who are, you know, watching and, and caring about the content and engaging in the community that, that I've very slowly and like unintentionally in the beginning it wasn't the intention to grow a community but that's really what what we've been doing and that is something that I do think about a bit more intentionally now so yeah I do want to talk more about this in its own video because I have a lot of thoughts after eight years on YouTube we're getting so close to ten years like as fast as the last four years have gone I know that I'm going to hit my 10th birthday before I know it, and that's just wild. But I have a flashing battery light, so I'm going to go. So you can leave me some birthday emojis in the comments for um, eight years on YouTube. You can give me your April writing creativity project updates, your writing project or, creati or creative project, whichever project you're working on. Give me your April gentle creativity project updates in the comments. Give this vlog a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Say hi in the comments as well while you're down there doing the other commenty things. And yeah, I will see you. I will see you all in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. <laughs> Goodbye.